Hi everybody, welcome to Wednesday's Wise Guys. It is the 23rd of September, hard to believe already, but um, we've got a couple new projects for you today. Last week we talked about making a table runner without a pattern, and this was the runner that we did. We cut our piece of batting, we put a center piece, we did a kind of a flip and fold method, and I'm going to review that for just a second, and then we're going to move on to a new technique. This one is just similar to what we did last week. It was a piece of batting. There's a piece of batting under here cut to the size that we wanted it. And then we took our scrap blocks and we just put them face down, stitched across here, flipped it up, and then we took a, we can put little batting, or excuse me, bind one more time, sashing strips in between and flip here and then trim and bind it. So our runner is quilt as you go with the construction. Each time that you attach a block, you're stitching through all your layers. So that's doing some of the quilting for you. You can come back and do decorative quilting if you want, um, but it depends on what your batting says. This batting is quilt up to eight inches apart. My blocks are eight inches, so my construction quilting is enough that I don't have to do any more quilting unless I want to. So that's what we did last week. If you want more details on that, you can watch that on our Daily Dose page or our YouTube channel. Um, website is sewingbasket.biz, B is in business, I, Z is in zebra, uh, Daily Dose page. Again, when you go to that page, all the videos that we've done all along are on that page. Give it about 20 seconds to load. It takes a little bit. It looks like nothing's happening, but it takes about 20 to 30 seconds for it to load because there's so much video on that page. So you can see everything there from last week. What we're going to talk about this week is creating a runner. Again, we're not going to use a pattern, and we're going to start with a piece of fusible batting, but we're going to kind of create our own thing. This was just some fabrics that we had. Um, the sample's been around for a while, so no, we don't have this fabric in the store anymore. Um, but what we're going to do is start with a piece of batting, and then we're going to put our fabrics on top, and then the sashings are created by rolling the back forward. So it's a quilt-as-you-go method that gives a sashing look between each block. So I'm going to show you some samples, I'm going to show you the basics of how to do it, and then I'll run through step-by-step step the sewing construction. So, this one behind me was a piece of batting that was actually a half a yard, so 18 inches this way and 40 inches this way. The interesting thing about this method is whatever size your batting is, that's how big your runner will finish because the block pieces are butted next to each other and the seam allowance comes to the front. So there's no calculation of seam allowance. So this runner was 18 inches, and you can see it's not quite 18 here, by 40. That's because I have one piece to add yet. This is my last piece, and this piece is going to get joined here, or if I want to, I can join it over here. I can do pretty much whatever I want, but what I did was I started with a piece of batting. I cut a 6-inch strip of batting off the side. I cut a 4-inch strip of the batting off this side, and then this one I just chopped into a couple pieces. I left this one large because I had a large print. So the way that my runner looks, it's kind of like creating a puzzle and putting it back together. And I'm going to just grab a piece of batting and a oh, little extra thread there. This is fusible batting. Again, the bumpy side is the glue side. The other side is not fusible. The fusible goes to the back of your fabric. So if I want to make a runner out of this piece, I've cut, this is 14 inches by about 40 inches. I usually shorten it down to 40 even though the batting is 42. That way I've got enough room at either end that I can use just a half yard piece of fabric and it's long enough to be my runner back and it still gives me enough to make that back fold. So here's my piece, and I can do whatever I want with this. I can just grab my ruler and say, 
Okay, I'm going to take some fabric that I have scrap. This will look familiar because I played with these same fabrics last week. And I can say, oh, maybe I just want to do some strips. Okay, I could just take some strips and lay them this way, lay them that way. I can do anything I want. All I need is a piece of fabric big enough to cover my batting. So I'm going to just chop this up a little bit and play. It's a little bit loosey-goosey for some of you. Um, it might drive you a little crazy, but all I'm going to do is pretend this is a piece of a puzzle. And I'm going to take, and I'm going to cut from this side, sorry here. I've just got my ruler here. And there's no magic. What I need is a straight line. And I'm going to take, say my scraps are mostly nine inches. I'm going to keep my chunks less than nine inches in width. And that way I know all my scraps are going to fit. This is an eight and a half inch ruler. So I'm going to just play with this. I'm going to cut one chunk. And I'm going to cut another piece. And then I'm going to take this one and I'm going to just make it lopsided, leave a bigger piece and a smaller piece. There's no magic here. A lot of times the size pieces that I use are based on what size my scraps are. And I'm going to do a four inch strip here. Again, no magic. And I'm going to just take one more piece off of here. And let's make it eight. Again, just because I feel like it. Okay. And then this piece, I'm going to cut the long, long way. And I don't want it quite in half, just because I like things asymmetrical. And there's all my batting pieces. So this one I cut this way. This one I cut here. These two are here. Okay. Might be a little bit off camera, but basically there's my pieces. And I can come back and say, oh gee, I don't like that. I can cut this into different pieces. But each piece of batting is going to be a different piece of fabric. So I can take my pieces of fabric and say, this one is going to fit on this piece. So I'm going to put that one there. And this one, not quite wide enough there. And I could have measured all of these fabric pieces and cut the batting specifically to fit. And those aren't quite wide enough, but I can play a little bit. I've got other pieces here. Okay. That one's going to fit on that piece. And I can just take my scissors and chop this piece off. Or like I did last week, I just tore it. And this one will fit on this piece. And I can keep going with this. I've got some other pieces here. But you've got the idea. So all I'm going to do, this is the top of my runner. I've got fabric pieces and batting pieces. And I want to just cover them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to slide my cutting mat out of here because I'm going to press. So once I've got my pieces, all I'm going to do is put the fusible side to the back of my fabric. And I'm going to take my little iron, flip it over, and I'm going to press. that onto there. And I'm going to grab my next piece and do this onto here. There is no magic. Seam allowance. Oh, there is no seam allowance. Okay. The, the um, batting is exactly the size that your piece is going to finish. So I, when I cut my puzzle pieces out of my batting, those are finished sizes. So if I started with 18 by 40, I finish to exactly 18 by 40. And you'll see how that goes together in just a minute. OK, so I've got these fused on here. And I'm not going to do the whole thing. But this little layout 
demonstration was to give you a feel that you can do anything you want. Once I've got all my pieces prepped, I'm going to grab my ruler and no seam allowance. I'm going to trim these, I'm just using my square up ruler, right along the edge of the batting. Okay, And if you do a lot of pieces, this one didn't have too real many pieces, but if you do a lot, you might want to number your pieces, one, two, three, four, so you can put your puzzle back together. But the magic is it doesn't have to go back together the way that you created it. So I'm going to take each piece here. Okay. And so these are my puzzle pieces. I'm going to trim one more here. I hate to make you watch me do boring stuff, but a couple pieces will give you the idea. So all I'm going to do, and this wasn't on here real straight of grain, which on some patterns won't matter. On this one it might look a little cockeyed. If I was doing this at home I would have paid a little bit more attention. But I bet with this print when we flip it over you won't even be able to see it. And if you can, you can say, I told you so. Okay. So here's my pieces. Yeah, it's a little bit crooked. Um, don't want that to fall off. So these two pieces were put together like this. These are going to go together as part of the top of my runner. So what I'm going to end up with is my whole runner is going to be just pieces like this that if I butt them together, once they're other piece here. If I butt them together, once they're all cut, they're, oops, sorry, they're still going to be 18 by 40. And they're just, these, this is the whole top of my runner prepped. Every piece is going to be like that. Does that make sense to everybody? So far so good. We'll pretend I could hear you all say a resounding yes. Once you've got your front pieces, you need to know what you want to use for your back. Your back is going to wrap to the front and look like a sashing. So on here, my back is green, and when I sew my pieces together, this is going to wrap to the front, creating a green sashing. So I have to decide what color I want for my backing. And I'm going to just take a piece of this, because I haven't happen to have it here, and this is some scrap. But I'm going to just grab this, and all I need to do on here, I'm going to just press that little crease out of there. Don't press on your cutting boards, that's not a good idea. And I'm going to put this on here, and when I get this trimmed, I need to have a one inch seam allowance all the way around. So I could measure this and say it's 8 by 10, and then I can go cut it and cut it 10 by 12. Much easier and much faster to use what I like to call slop factor. I don't, it will waste a little bit of fabric, but it will save you a whole lot of time. I need about an inch, and so I'm just going to cut this. Again, I could tear it if I wanted to. Okay. And that's my back for this piece, and I would do that for each piece that I'm working on. And again, I want to just get my cutting mat out of here for a second, because I want to get the wrinkle out of the back here. Okay, and then once I have my back cut, all I'm going to do is take a little 505. I could use glue stick, I could use pins if I wanted to baste it. 505 is just quick and easy. I'm going to just do a couple little dots. I'm going to put it on here, and again, like we talked last week, we're going to just kind of pat it into place. And so that's going to stick here, stick there, and a little more on that corner, and we're good. And then I'm going to trim this to size. And by that I mean I'm going to grab my square up ruler, and I'm going to add one inch all the way around. If you had big pieces, could you quilt it before you trim it up? Exactly. Exactly. You can quilt, you can embroider. On my sew together sample, you'll see the quilting. But yes, you can quilt this all now. You can take pre quilted pieces, you can do whatever you want. Um, I'm going to put a one inch 
seam allowance all the way around. So I'm using my square up ruler where I've got my one inch counting this way and my one inch this way. I'm going to lay it right along the edge of my front fabric. So I'm trimming my background. Can you see that okay, Cheryl? So I'm trimming this at one inch. And then I'm going to turn this way and I'm going to trim the other two sides. Not quite lined up. You want to be sure these are nice and even because if these aren't even, your seams aren't, your project is not going to go together well. So pay close attention. The slop factor is how you get your piece to about the right size, but once you're doing your actual cutting, you want to have exactly one inch all the way around your block. So as you make your runner, every single piece is going to end up looking like this. I'm going to have this piece, I'm going to have this piece with back. All of my puzzle pieces are going to be prepped like this. Okay? And again, as Cheryl said, you can quilt them um, as much or as little as you want to. You can also quilt it when you're done. Um, but quilting it ahead of time is fast and easy. You can do something as simple as an X through it, different decorative stitches. Um, the one thing when you're quilting, you quilt to the edge of your top fabric. Do not quilt into the seam allowance, the overhang. If you quilt onto here, when I roll this and finish that, your quilting is going to show up on the front. So you only quilt to the edge of your top fabric. Okay? So I'm going to set those aside and um, I'm going to move on to the how to construct from a sample that I have made from other fabric. And again, the layout at the start where we had our puzzle pieces, that's what I did here. These can be any shape or size. Just for ease, I made all of my little samples that I'm going to sew together here a square. And so I have 8 inch square of fabric, 8 inch piece of batting on the back, and this one I hadn't trimmed yet. So I'm going to just repeat that one more time. I'm going to plunk this right in the middle. Okay. And so I can make my whole quilt, runner, throw pillow, whatever I'm making, I could make it out of all squares if I want to. But the exercise at the start was to show you it can be any size or shape you want. It doesn't just have to be squares. So many of these projects that I see are all squares, and that's fine, but I like to have variety, and I like to know I can do different shapes. Um, and I know somebody's thinking, can I cut triangles? Yes, you can. Triangles will work. Again, it will, you'll have a triangle, but you'll have that one inch all the way around. They're a little tougher to sew together. You have to be real careful with the angles when you're stitching, but they do work. I would suggest starting with squares and rectangles and then moving on to triangles from there. Okay, so here is my block for my first project. And so what I'm going to do, if my runner is going to be four blocks long, I need four eight inch squares, four eight inch squares of batting, and I need four ten inch squares of background. Again, you can cut all that ahead of time. I don't. I cut my front, I trim my batting to size, and I cut everything with a little bit of a slop factor. It's just faster and easier. But if you like to have all your ducks in a row ahead of time, you're going to cut four 8-inch squares, four 8-inch squares of batting, and four 10-inch squares of background fabric. Batting and top are always the same size. That is the size your block will finish to. The back will roll to the front to be your sashing, so you'll always see your back on the front. So here's my first block. And the way that they stitch together is I have a block right here. This one, I just did a row of decorative stitches down the center to be my um, quilting. I'm going to take my two blocks that are finished and I'm going to put them back to back 
back sides together. Okay. And I'm going to line them up and I'm going to stick about three pins in there, one in the middle and one on each end. And I would do this flat on the table, but you're going to line that up real straight. And then you're going to come in and you're going to sew. Cheryl, can you see this okay? You're going to sew from end to end, off the seam allowance, end to end, right even with the edge of this batting. If you want to, you can take your ruler and you can extend the line, but you can eyeball it pretty easily. But I'm going to just draw a blue line here so you can see it. Okay, And I'm going to stitch I'm going to do a little lock stitch at the start. I'm going to do a straight stitch. I usually stitch at a 2.5 or a 3.0, and I'm going to stitch right next to my front fabric. Not on it. I don't want my batting to go in my seam allowance, but I want to be right next to it. And here I'm going to talk for just a minute about what foot to use. We've got a video on different sewing feet as well. With the Brother machines, you have the J foot and the N foot are your two standard feet. The end foot has a little slash in the middle, which if I'm stitching, just pull this pin out of the way, if I'm stitching right along that edge, this can actually kind of pull up into the foot. And you know how that happens sometimes, you have to stop and raise your foot and put it back down. So I tend to use the J foot. The J foot has a piece of plastic here so that nothing can pull up through here. Okay, so when I stitch, I stitch right across here, I do a lock stitch, and I stitch right along that blue line all the way off the end and do a lock stitch again. Okay? When that's done, I'm going to just pop this off. I decided not to run over to the sewing machine and show you that. It's really, you're sewing a straight line. So this one would then be connected. And then what it looks like is this. My two seam allowances are to the front. I've got, this is a lock stitch at either end, stitched across, my two seam allowances are to the front. And I'm going to take my little iron and I'm going to press this seam allowance open. Okay. And then each of those seam allowances are going to roll underneath. This is going to fold under here and be stitched and this is going to roll under. I find the easiest way to do that is to take a little bit of a glue stick and just run a little glue along the end. This is kind of a yellow glue, you might be able to see that. And all I'm going to do is take this edge and fold it down to that seam allowance. Okay. And I can do this with the iron without the glue, but when you're new the glue just gives it a little extra stability. And then I can just press that. Okay. And that's going to stay nice and flat there. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to run my glue along here. And I'm going to fold this one down this way. Give it a good stick, and that's going to go right along there, and I'm going to give it a real good press right here. And that is what creates my sashing, a little best press will keep that nice and flat as well. Um, that's I got a close up so they can't Oh, okay. That, um, so this is going to give you your seam, again, now you're going to do an edge stitch, which is really close to this edge. I'm going to do a lock stitch at the end. I'm going to sew right along this edge and lock stitch here and then do the same thing here. And I'm going to hold this one is already stitched. Can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. Go down a little bit. Down. down that way? There you go. Okay. So you can see I've got a lock stitch. I stitch across, lock stitch, here. So when I start, my two are back to back. I stitch edge to edge, and that has my seam allowance coming up to the top. 
then I fold my seam allowance under and press it, and then I stitch it. So this is finished seam. On the back, I used a black thread so you could see what I was doing. That's just my decorative stitch. You can see last night I looked like I had some wine, but I didn't. Um, and I used a black thread here. Normally, I would thread match to the back of my project. And so this is all ready to go then. So if this were, if I was just making this runner three blocks long, the next thing that I would do is my outer edge becomes my binding. So this rolls in half this way, and then in half again, and that becomes my binding. And I do both edges, and then I come and do the ends. And so the whole thing is finished with the outer edge becoming your binding. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Yay, do I have a thumbs up? Not yet, but Not yet. there will be one, I'm sure. Please, somebody. Okay, so I'm going to bring this down for just a second. Okay, so here, what I did. There's a thumbs up. All right, thank you. Yay! Up in the yay, end. yay! Okay, so on here, I had my big piece. This will need to be quilted in some way because this batting is quilted up to eight inches apart, and this is about eight inches wide, but it's too long. So I need to do some quilting in here. I could have done it before, or I can do it now. These two don't need any quilting because they're small enough. So I sewed this one to this one. So this seam allowance came up, rolled each way. This to this, finished my seam allowance. And then I added this big long piece. And I have that piece that I can still add. I can decide now if I like this runner the way it is, I could just stop it here, roll that, and it becomes my binding. Or my original plan was to add this leaf print on this side. So if I want to add this, these two go face to face, back to back. I stitch along this whole length, and when I open that up, that seam allowance is going to come to the top, and I'm going to roll it under. Question, are the binding corners mitered? The bindings are square. Um, you can miter them if you want to. Um, I had one lady, who I'll show you in a minute, poked in the corner and said, yes, but this is open. Well, yes, it takes a tweezers to get in there and open it. You can miter it if you want to. It would go in just like a regular miter. Just set your miter on the corner that way. Is that in a spot you can see, Cheryl? Yep. Okay, so I'd do this, and then I would roll this way, press that, and then I would roll this one, and then it would go in again. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, it has to come in all the way. Comes into here, sorry about that. Into here, and then this goes halfway, and then this goes in again, and that will miter your corners, okay? They look perfectly fine. I have a few things that are finished. I'll show you the corners. A straight corner on them looks just fine because you're looking at the design, not at the corner typically. Okay, so I can choose to add this. And like I said, you have choices here. My original thought was to add this on this side. I can, add, I can leave it off completely. I can add it to this side or I could say, you know what, I'd kind of like it if I added this, a piece at each end. Put one piece, this piece is long enough. How would I do that? I would cut it off here, and I have to peel this back because I need to get that inch of back. So I need it to be exactly this long, but then the top piece in the batting, I've got to just peel back a little bit to give myself that one inch seam allowance. And then I could add that piece, excuse me, that piece right at each end. Okay? So it's very flexible. Questions there? Going okay? All right. So a couple show and tell items. This one is 
This was done with a panel. Again, this is an older sample. We do not have the chef fabric. But this is from a little um, panel. We do have a brand new bird panel in, which I had sitting here somewhere. You see it? Okay, I'll keep going. Sure, I'll find it. So this was just panels. These panels were like seven inches. And so I took my panel, cut my square, cut my batting the exact same size, and then cut my backing a little bit bigger. This backing is just kind of fun and funky, and that's what comes in front to make the sashing. I'm going to hold up these square corners. You can hardly get in there, hardly move in there. It's, it's a half There's inch. a tiny little hole right here. And if you say, oh, but there's a hole right there, you really have to pick at it to find it. You can hand stitch that shut if it really bugs you. You can miter it, but you don't even notice the corners when you're working on a project like this. So fun way to do panels. If I wanted to do throw pillows, I could just do four squares and turn it into a throw pillow. Lots of fun stuff you can do. This is a new panel we just got in. This would be really pretty with um, a runner into something like this. Each of those can just go into a square. Or if you want different shapes, you can cut them long and thin. You can put that puzzle together any way that you want to. And then to continue, can you hand me that leaf strip? Sorry. Thank you. So this is basically a 40 inch strip. This is 40 inches of fabric from here to here and about a six inch strip wide. I could do a whole bunch of these and make a quilt. And that's what we did with this little quilt. And this is my sample of, remember whatever the back is, the sashing is gonna be. So I have a green and a brown and a different brown. And this little, quilt and I'm going to pin it right up here because I think that'll be easier to see. Is that good location, Cheryl? Yep. Okay. Okay. So this is one strip, just like this. Whatever size my batting is, that's what size this finished strip is going to be. This rolls onto it. So the finished distance, this is going to be six inch wide. So this is basically that piece. Okay. This piece was a piece of batting this big. I took the turtle and I put it there. I took the brown piece, put it face to face, stitched like we learned last week. Took this one, put it face to face and flipped. This is my next piece. I have my brown down. I put this face to face. I stitch it. I flip it over. Took a little brown strip. Again, flip and sew. That creates this piece. This piece was a brown, an animal. This is one solid strip. So this is a quilt created by doing nothing more than creating, this happened to be eight inch strips. So this is an eight inch piece of, eight inch by 40 piece of fabric, eight inch by 40 piece of batting. The backing is 10 inches, because I need an inch on the top and the bottom, by 42, an inch at either side. So it'll look just like this, and it goes together, two pieces back to back. And where I talked about the sashing being a different color, this back rolls to the front. So I have a two color sashing. Down here at the bottom, my back is, bottom row is green. And so I have a green and brown sashing. Whatever's on the back rolls to the front. And so if you look at my binding, my binding is brown, brown, lighter brown, and down around the bottom, it's green. If I had done my whole back the same color, my sashing would be all the color, same color. But it's kind of fun to have different color sashing. So that's a really simple quilt as you go project that you make plain and simple. Just cut your pieces out. The last one I'm going to show you is very similar to our sample that is squares just like this one. 
This um, quilt was seven inch squares and nine inch backing pieces. My whole back was turquoise. You can see some stitching here. I used decorative stitching. And this I used all different textures. And actually, I'll put it right up here. Oh, I'll hold it, I think. Okay, so this is cuddle. These are all cuddle pieces. This is corduroy. This was flannel. So this is seven inch squares. And I think this is 30, 35. I think it's 35 squares, if I remember correctly. Um, so I cut 35 pieces that are seven by seven, 35 pieces of batting, seven by seven, and 35 backing squares that are nine by nine. And I sewed them together just like I showed you. Made a row at a time, another row. Once I have two rows done, I join my rows. But all the sashing is the same color because the back is the same color. And these have just real simple little decorative stitches for my quilting on each block. This took me about five or six hours to do the whole thing. Because when you get right down to it, all you're doing is cutting a few squares, some really simple stitching. It takes longer to put the pieces together than it does to create the whole quilt. This is also a great method if you're trying to make a t-shirt quilt. You can back and, and quilt each t-shirt separately and then assemble it into the quilt top. Exactly. Very good point, Cheryl. So that's plain and simple. What you do, the things to remember, don't worry about seam allowance. Whatever shape your batting is, is exactly the same size as your finished piece. And that finished piece, my nine inch strip is from here to here is nine inches because the, the back rolls and covers that top ha half inch, but my strip is still nine inches wide. So the one thing to watch on something like this is if I have a finished block like this, I'm going to lose a half inch because that back is going to roll to the front. So if I have stars or points that I'm trying to match, I have to leave more space around the front because there is no seam allowance. This would actually be covered by the wrap. So if I cut, if I leave myself a half inch all the way around, then when my half inch rolls over, it's going to hit right at that edge. That's the most complex thing that happens. But if you've got simple blocks and different shapes, um, this was just some pre-quilted squares. They were already quilted with a, a box around them. We just cut them out and this will just fold forward. And that's all there is to it. Plain and simple, no pattern. Whatever size your batting is, your blocks are. All right, we got a few new things in. I showed you the bird panel. There's a couple new fabrics. I'll snap some pictures and put them on Facebook a little later in the week. We've got some other things coming too. And other than that, we'll see you next week. Bye.